But I remember the time, like, oh, what a horrible. But after I, I woke up from all my indoctrination in college, all the brainwashing, when I got out of college, I hated America. I just hated it. I thought we were a country based on racism. I thought all non-Indians were crazy because they all had some sort of mental illness that made them hate Indians. I was convinced people hated Indians in 1994 because I just graduated from college, from a liberal arts college, convinced. And I was really depressed over it. Hated America, hated, our, hated Americans. And I was very pro-gay because I was very anti-homophobes because I thought they were, you know, dragging gay people behind their pickups. Well, they weren't. I never met. So I'm from what people would think was a very conservative, rednecky town. Laporte has 145 people. 143 of them have their permit to carry license. <laughs> you know, I come from a town of hunters and fishermen and loggers. And my graduating class had 18 kids. It was small, rural town. And yeah, the F word for homosexual men was thrown around like an adjective. You know? Or a noun or something. <laughs> I remember Michael told me once, he played football for about three years in junior high. And the coach would say stuff like, quit blocking like a fag. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, how does a, how does a homosexual block? Ooh, yeah, what? It's football. You already got me wearing tights, knickers, but. So there was that kind of talk. It was an insult to be called that, but not because anybody really cared. You're also called a lady when you're a boy because nobody, you know, whatever. So after a few years of living out in the real world, and I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, yeah I know what happened. Oh, should I get real with you guys? Okay. So I used to be a social justice warrior. I used to be a really liberal, liberal. I was all about gay rights. I was all anti undoing racism, we called it. Undoing race was gonna undo the racism of this terrible country. And I had a lot of resentment and distrust and depression. And then I had a little kitten who was very old, no, so I guess a cat named Princess, who I inherited, the only inheritance I ever got in my life was when my grandmother passed away. I inherited this cat and for about seven years, we lived together. And I fell in love with her. And then she passed away. And my heart broke. And I fell into a depression. Grief. And it blew my mind. I started praying all the time. And this is like, I don't know. What year was Hillary and Trump going at it? 2015, maybe? Something happened, my mind, I had what they call a paradigm shift. Everything got turned upside down. It occurred to me that I went, okay, wait. Is this country really that racist? Have I ever been a victim of racism? Nope. If anything, being a Anishinaabe Kwe, being an Indian woman has been a privilege. You know, I get certain privileges. 
when I was in college, when I took a, what they called minorities in literature, <laughs> right? Basically anything but a heterosexual European writer we read. But the teacher was from another country. Like, I don't know, Peru or something. And he goes, listen, I'm not a minority. I know in this country, in this college, it looks like I am. But in my country, I'm not. So I'm not going to speak as though I understand what minorities go are going through. Natasha, you're Native American. Why don't you tell us? And he would just hand over the class to me to talk about what it was like to be a minority. It was stupid. I don't know. I don't think I am a minority. Now, how are you a minority when you're an Indian on a reservation? You're not a minority if you're an Indian on an Indian reservation. You're the majority. You're the privileged class. But, so I went, okay, and I've never actually been arrested, followed in a store, hassled in any way. I've never heard a racial slur. Oh, I haven't been represented in movies. What? We're like one thirteenth of the one or one one hundredth of the population. We expect to be on as many TV shows as white people who are seventy percent. Whatever. And then I had to go. Okay, have I ever met a real racist? You know. So maybe they haven't done anything to me. But that doesn't mean that my brothers and sisters aren't getting hassled. Because they certainly complain a lot. Oh, really, Natasha? You don't believe in racism? Well, take a look at the custody list in Beltrami County Jail. Look at how many Indian people are in there. It's almost all Indian. It's like, yeah. Well, what does that tell you? It's like, I don't want to say it out loud. Because Indians get mad at me for pointing out the obvious truth. You're all breaking the laws. I don't know why there aren't more white people. You assume they're stealing bikes too, but... Maybe they're not. I don't know. I can't assume the cops are going, Oh, that's a white guy. Let him go. He's speeding, but I'm not going to take down one of my brothers. Oh, here comes an Indian guy. Let's bust him. That, no. And what do you do with the Indian cops who pull you over? The only times I've been pulled over, that, there you go, have been by Indian cops. Reservation cops. That's the only time I've ever been hassled by a cop. 